Well, welcome everybody to the USS Constitution Museum and our second episode in our series, A Sailor's Life Live. My name is Emily. I'm an educator at the museum, which is located in Boston, Massachusetts. And our museum, both in the building and virtually online, is full of interactive exhibits, objects, and learning materials that tell the story of America's ship of state, the USS Constitution. Here she is. And she is also um, located in Boston, Massachusetts, just across the Navy Yard from our museum. And I'm joined today by an active duty Navy sailor who is stationed on USS Constitution, and he is on the ship today, there in the flesh. And so I'm gonna kick it over to him to introduce himself and tell us why Constitution is such a special ship. Well, first of all, thank you, Emily, for that brief introduction. My name is Abdon Vivas. And once again, welcome back to this new episode with the USS Constitution Museum and us, the crew of the USS Constitution. And we're kicking it off today here in the birthday. Well, First of all, we need to understand why. What is the USS Constitution? Well, it is the oldest commissioned warship afloat. This means that it's the oldest of the world. She's 222 years old. She's still commissioned because we, active members of the military, still, uh, still work here in, in the ship. Afloat because she's still on, um, floating on water and, well, now that we know this, we can start talking about the birthday. Uh, a couple of things that you need to know about this place, this area, is that we are three decks or three floors underneath the first floor of the USS Constitution. This is where sailors will typically sleep. They will sleep in a canvas uh, bed that will be hanging from both sides, as you can see. Uh, it will be attached by ropes to this ring that we call clue. And whenever, um, whenever we were aboard the ship at sea, we, we have to find a way of going about our day. But at the time, we don't have the technology to set alarms. We don't have the resources uh, that we do today. So what did sailors did back in, in 1812 to know at what time they were supposed to do their work? Well, they had two watches, four teams that were split from eight to midnight that will sail the uh, that will sail the ship, and the other team will then relieve at midnight the first team. This will be indicated by the sound of a bell that will be ring every thirty minutes. Now, Emily, uh, would you like to talk a little bit about uh, the hammocks and the sleeping arrangement uh, arrangements that we have on the ship? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce that, Abdon, and we'll get right back to you. Thank you for that introduction. So we are talking about sailor chores today in our program. Chores, those things that we all have to do, but we kind of don't like doing. And so I want you guys to take a minute and tell me, what are some of the chores you have having to do while you're stuck at home? Um, and the way you can tell me about those is if you look down at the bottom of your screen, you're gonna see a chat button. And in that chat, if you could share with us, what are the chores you are doing at home right now? So type into some of those responses for me. And I'll also say that near that button on the bottom of your screen is a Q&A button. And at any time during this program today, you can ask a question and my colleague, Sarah, who's behind the scenes, will try to answer that for you. So tell me what kind of chores you're doing right now at home. Let's see, I'm looking at the chat here. Dirty dishes, unloading the dishwasher, sweeping the floors, yard work. Oh, I know. Yeah. Sweeping. Okay. Oh, nothing except doing math. So homework, that kind of feels like a chore too. Your chickens. Awesome. All right. Washing dishes, watering plants. Yeah. A lot of stuff you have to do at home. Thank you for sharing that. Babysitting. Okay. You all can take a look at that chat as well and see what people are sharing. So. That's great, thanks for sharing that. Like us, um, sailors on the USS Constitution in 1812 were also stuck at home. Home in the sense that the ship was their home and they were stuck on the ship for several months while they were out at sea, they couldn't leave. And so they had to do chores too. 
They had to keep their ship clean. They had to try to keep it free of disease, have good hygiene. And chores also gave the sailors something to do. There were 450 of them on the ship. With that many sailors, chores was a way to keep them busy. So we're gonna look today at some of the chores sailors did, and they're similar to the ones you guys are listing in the chat. However, they looked a little bit different on a wooden warship from 1812. So we're gonna start with making the bed. And um, making the bed, that's something we all do every day or we should do every day. And sailors on Constitution had to make the bed too. But already that's different because sailors did not sleep on a bed, they slept on a hammock. So um, yeah, Abdon, I'm gonna kick it over to you to show us what a hammock looks like. Well, uh, thanks again, Emily. So if you see me, uh, if you can see me right now, you see how tight the space is. It's, um, it's just about one, uh, 1 1.5, 1 1.2 inches in width, and in length is gonna be five feet, approximately. So you can see how tight it is and how close sailors were to each other. So from one side to the other side, they would have um, nine inches of personal space, which in total you only get 18 inches of personal space. Can you imagine having uh, your brothers or your sisters so close to you all the time? Um, right now, I believe that this is pretty close. Um, imagine if this was filled with hundreds, 250 sailors at the same time. That's the uh, amount of sailors that will be sleeping at the same time. But it's very important to know that whenever we were called to our task, the bell was ringing. But other, other instruments were played to announce different things. For example, a five bell will be the call to uh, battle stations or, or, um, or designated um, guns upstairs, or also a boxer's pipe, which is a whistle, will indicate the time that we have to uh, readily or wake up. So now I have a boxer's mate that is going to um, call readily for us. So you can uh, hear and see how a uh, sailor back in 1812 uh, made his bed. So let's straight out. All right, so Jack, before our bosun's mate does that, I just wanna set this up for folks for a second. Thank you, Abdon. So you're gonna see on your screen an illustration of folks sleeping in their hammocks, just like Abdon is doing on the USS Constitution. As he said, they was very tight. This is a hammock plan from 1794 of a ship similar to Constitution. You're gonna see all those little ovals are the hammocks represented on the birth deck there. They are all numbered. Every sailor had a numbered hammock. And as Abdon said, nine inches of space in between. Boom, that is not that much space right next to you. Um, so I think that is something that not a lot of us would enjoy sleeping uh, next to all the time. And then as he said, every day when the sailors went to make their bed, um, they, were, they had to start by waking up and they were given a call by the bosun, who was one of the sailors who had this pipe that you see on your screen, and they would hear their alarm clock, which was a whistle. So Jacqueline, can you give us a, a, a sense of that? seconds at the most was quite fast and then the day and the daily routine begins awesome thanks abdon so we're gonna meet abdon up on the spar deck in a couple minutes because he's gonna show us where that hammock went does that sound good we'll connect with you in a minute or so sounds good okay cool while he's walking up there 
Um, so you guys heard, thanks to, to Jacqueline, she's a bosun's mate currently on USS Constitution. So real treat to hear her um, blow us that, that tune there to pipe up hammocks. And so yeah, that you'd hear that whistle, it was time to get up, all hammocks up, ahoy. You took down your hammock. If you overslept, not a good thing. Your hammock might be cut down or it, you might be beaten with ropes. So it really, you really had to get up on time in the Navy. And like Abdon did, you rolled up your hammock and um, on Constitution, your hammock, you rolled it seven times until it kind of looked like this, a lumpy sausage shaped thing. Um, the real hammocks on Constitution would have had a mattress and a blanket in them as well, which you didn't see on the one with that Abdon did, but that's okay. This illustration shows you how that looked. And then you took your hammock, rolled it up, lashed it, tied it with ropes, and carried it up to the spar deck of the ship. The spar deck being the outer top level of the ship. So you walked up two flights of stairs to get there and you stowed your hammock in the hammock netting. So take a look at this illustration and see if you can find where those hammocks are. You should see them uh, to the right side above the guns. And so while we're waiting for Abdon, can you guys in the chat share with me, why the heck do you think they were moving their hammocks from the berth deck up to the spar deck every day? Why did they have to do this every day? Why not just leave them down on the birth deck? Give me some ideas as to why they were doing that. Okay. And you guys can check out the chat too and see what's up. Wash them, air them out. Yeah, definitely. A shield, yes, definitely. It's gonna help you out in a battle, which we'll talk about. More room to move around. Yeah, you guys saw that birth deck. You can hardly stand up straight down there. Great, free space. These are all awesome answers, thank you. Yeah, so you guys are exactly right that these hammocks, um, it, one purpose of, of stowing them every day was to get fresh air, get some sun on them, kill those germs, and get more air down in that cramped birth deck area where there was very little light or fresh air. And another reason was for battle. They actually could help you. Um, as you can see, they're above the guns there and they provided an extra layer of protection from enemy cannonballs and they also um, provided an extra layer of protection from boarding parties enemy people who tried to climb up over the railing and attack your ship so it was another layer of protection of course the problem is that your bed could be blown to pieces um, during a battle and then if you don't have an extra hammock uh, you got to wait till you get into the next port to get a new bed. So that is a hazard of uh, the hammocks on USS Constitution. So Abdon, are you up at the hammock netting at this point? Similar. Awesome. Okay, we can hear you. So you want to show folks where we, they stuck those hammocks? We stuck here and uh, so was explaining how the second a hammock of every sailor stack one uh, along each other in this uh, hammock netting. But the reason why is to deflect some of the um, rounds and some of the musket fire from the enemy ships. And well, you might think, well, it's just a canvas, uh, a piece of wool that how could how could that protect the ship from actual fire? Well. If you stack so many of them, there's going to be a point that is going to be so dense that they will deflect fire uh, rounds at you. So imagine that all of this is filled uh, completely. That, um, in that scenario, we will have around 446 to uh, yes, 46 hammocks stacked all over the control. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad we got to see that in person because normally when you go on Constitution, you guys don't have hammocks in there. So I really appreciate you pointing that out. And that runs around the whole ship, right? Yes. Yeah. It goes uh, all the way around the ship, as you can see. Great. Thank all you the way so to the stern or the back of the, sh of the ship to the bow of the ship, which is the front of the ship. And now, speaking of the front, we're going to start heading to the front of the ship as well. All right, so we're gonna head up with Abdon in a second. I'm gonna introduce our second um, chore here while he gets set up to show us a demonstration. Um, 
And what, so right, I just wanted to end this part too by saying it wasn't just sailors who slept in hammocks. Um, this is a cat on the World War II ship HMS Eagle, uh, obviously with its own little hammock as well, though I doubt the cat had to stow its own hammock every day like the sailors did. So with that said, um, we have, we have talked about uh, two chores, or one chore so far that you had to do. You had to make your bed, which is called stowing your hammock. The second chore we're gonna look at is what would have come next in the day for a sailor, which is um, cleaning the floor, okay? Now, nowadays, we have all kinds of things to clean the floor. We have vacuum, we have cleaner, we have disinfectant wipes, okay? But the sailors in 1812, they were using a stone. And this stone was called a holy stone. That's because the sailors thought it looked like a prayer book or a Bible. And that when they were using it, they were bent down on the deck and they were looked, people thought that they looked like they were praying. So here's an illustration of that. And the way it worked is basically they would wet the deck, they would put sand down on that wet deck and they would take that stone and they would scrub the dirt and grime away. So no cleaner for them. And so Abdon, can you show us how it's done? Thanks, Emily. Uh, well, I brought my own holy stone today for you guys, and I'm gonna get ready to start a holy stone in this deck. So first thing that a sailor must, must do is he has to roll up his pants in order for, uh, for preparation uh, to get on my knees. Why we do that? Because you wouldn't like, you, you wouldn't like your pants to get wet and to get all sandy. First of all, whenever you're ready, you also will take your shoes off, but I'm not doing that today. <laughs> so, you get on your knees, as Emily was explaining, in the prayer position, and then with your holy stone or your praying book, you will find one of these corners and you start and you're going to start sanding this deck or the floor. We call them decks on ships. And then you continue sanding and sanding and sanding until it's completely white and smooth. It's also important to uh, bear in mind that the holy stone was greedy. It was a type of greedy rock similar to sandpaper. So imagine that texture of sandpaper as you keep sanding that deck for hours and hours until the task is achieved. Uh, we also had bigger slabs of rock that will be pulled by teams uh, on each side. Will be um, three on that side and three on this side. And each one will be pulling, but that will be for the bigger parts of the deck. The smaller, uh, the smaller stones for the praying books will be for angles and corners like this, which are harder to get with bigger rocks. So um, that's holy stoning one on one for you guys. <laughs> Thanks. That's cool. That's really cool to see. Thank you for giving us a live demonstration there. Awesome. Um, so Abdon, the deck you're cleaning, it, it looks pretty clean. And that wasn't always the case on USS Constitution. Um, if you guys think about when you clean your floor, uh, what are you cleaning up? Maybe you're cleaning up uh, food that's spilled, juice, dirt you tracked in from the yard, nail polish. Um, but on a warship, the deck could get a lot messier because this was a warship, it was in battle, and war is a messy thing. So this is a painting of Constitution during the battle of uh, the Java battle with the HMS Java. And just take a moment to observe that painting and think about, okay, what is the mess you would have to clean up after something like this? Okay, just think about that. You're gonna have blood, you're gonna have sweat, you're gonna have gunpowder, sand, you're gonna have all these things on the deck. And you're also gonna have pieces of blown out hammocks. You can see the hammocks there lining the, lining the rail. You're gonna have pieces of sail. You're gonna to have tons of splinters from cannonballs that hit your wood and scattered all over the deck. So I would say it is a tough job to clean the decks of the ship um, after a battle. But of course, battle didn't happen all the time. Um, most of the time, the sailors were not in battle. They needed something to do and they had to clean the deck. And it was not something they liked to do. 
This sailor wrote in his journal, this was the most disagreeable duty in the ship, especially on cold, frosty mornings. So I would tend to agree that Boston on a cold, frosty morning, not pleasant. I would not want to be um, scrubbing the deck of the Constitution at that time. So, and another thing, you guys can try scrubbing the deck yourself, actually. Um, we have a game page at our museum website called A Sailor's Life for Me. And we have a play section where we have a bunch of mini games that you can try doing things that the sailors have done. We will share this link out at the end of the presentation. And one of the things you can do is you can try scrubbing the decks. So I'm gonna give you a preview of this game. You have to quickly scrub the decks without running out of energy. Here I go. Okay, scrubbing, scrubbing. Oh my God, running, I'm so tired. Okay. Oh, got some more energy. Still some more to do. Oh, almost done. Did it. Oh, more deck to clean. Now a cannonball's also rolling towards me. So give that a try at home and see how fast you can scrub the decks of Constitution as well. Okay, so we have looked at two chores so far. Stowing your hammock, cleaning the decks. The last chore we're going to look at today is cleaning the toilet. Now, I know this was a job I had to do as a kid. I did not like it. I don't think the sailors liked it very much either. And, um, but I would argue that maybe the sailors had it a little easier because they didn't have to scrub a toilet bowl. Their toilet was simply um, a hole in the side of the ship and their business went right through that hole into the ocean. So here's an illustration of that. And we're gonna have Abdon on the ship uh, show us that and tell us what that thing was called. You get it? So um, this is the very front of the ship, guys. As I was telling you, this is the bow of the ship. In the modern Navy, we also use the same terms that they use in 1812. But some of the terms, they might seem antiquated or they sound very old. And the origins of some of them can be found in Constitution. And one of them, the one that Emily was particularly talking about, is the restroom. So cleaning the restroom, the bathroom, um, it's a hard task. But in Constitution, we had a different type of bathroom. The one that is an open hole that goes all the way down to the ocean. So right now, it's closed uh, due to some post-winter um, protection that we have, but this will be the area where, where the head will be located. Behind this netting, there's a small gap that you can see. That you can see some planks right there, and underneath them will be the heads. Why we call the bathroom in the Navy heads? Because they're here. They're in the head of the ship, in the bow of the ship. And that's one of the main reasons uh, we still use so many terms because of um, historic tradition, so to speak. And this is only for the sailors. This is for the general population of the ship. But coming up, we have the captain's own private bathroom or own private head. Awesome, yeah. Cool, so Abdon's gonna meet us. He's gonna go down a level now on the ship to the captain's quarters, and he's gonna meet us down there to show us the captain's pit. All right, we'll catch you in one second. Yeah, so that's really cool to see the head here. Um, once again, we have our illustration. And just so you guys can see where Abdon was, he's at the head of the ship, as he said. So that arrow there points to where the bathroom was. Now the bathroom was only for, whoops, enlisted sailors. Um, the officers and the captain, they didn't have to go up here and, and do their business in the hole. They got to do their business into something called a chamber pot, which is what this looks like right here. It's a pot. And unfortunately with the chamber pot is that it had to be emptied every day out into the ocean. And that was some poor sailor's chore to empty this chamber pot. And so we have a game also on our website um, called Don't Spill, 
which can give you the sense of what you have to do to empty a chamber pot on USS Constitution. So in this game, you have to hold your, your chamber pot steady as the ship rocks back and forth. So let's see how I can do here. Oh God, I'm, it's already spilling out. Oh my God, I'm about to, no, ah, okay. Oh God, it's spilling, okay, I spilled way too many times. That's gross, that's more cleaning the decks people are gonna have to do with those holy stones there. All right, well, um, I think Abdon is good to meet us now um, in, the captain's, in the captain's head. So show us what that looked like. Well, here we have a very good representation of what a head looks like. See, there's a hole, and underneath will be your pot to uh, gather everything and uh, avoid spilling on the deck. And to clarify something that I said before, yes, it will be dumped directly into the ocean, but it will be the task of one of our either most junior sailors or the ship's boy. Mm. Yeah, thanks for showing us that. Okay, yeah, um, that, yeah, at least he had his own space, but he still, someone still had to do the dirty work, huh? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, and um, I would also just wanted to let folks know that as we talk about these chores today, um, we do a lot of things, I think, to make chores more bearable for us. Um, we put on music, we put on the TV, we listen to a podcast, we chat with our friends or family. Um, the sailors, however, on Constitution, they didn't have that option because they had to do all of these chores in silence. This is a ship's regulation from 1815. Silence in the performance of all duties is the first principle of discipline and as such is to be particularly enforced at all times. So these guys couldn't chat it up. There was no music. They had to be totally silent doing this stuff alone with their chamber pot, alone with their uh, holy stone. So Abdon, uh, can you share with us some of the chores that you still have to do on Constitution today? Absolutely, Emily. Let's start with polishing anything that is brass on the ship. Whenever we have people coming over, we have tourists, and all of you guys that come to the ship, you see everything, you, you want to touch it, you want to feel it, you want to feel the history. But every time that you see a brass, like a very shiny piece of brass, uh, that's because we, the crew, actually polish it before you, you came to visit us. So that's one of the main tasks that we have here in Constitution. Um, also, whenever we finish with our daily operations, we clean the decks. It's, they usually get really dusty, uh, especially on the lower decks of the ship. Do you still um, use the Holy Stone? No, thank, thank God to that, because <laughs> I, I wish, I wish um, there was another way for those sailors, poor sailors back then to clean those decks, because that's, uh, that must be exhausting. I've tried to clear, uh, clean my own bathroom using a brush or something like that, and 10 minutes into it, you can start feeling it everywhere. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you have some more maybe modern equipment to clean up stuff. Yeah, than the sailors did. Yeah. Is there a piece of brass you could show us on the, near you that you have to polish? Absolutely, Emily. Give us a second. Okay. While he's walking over there, guys, um, I am going to just say that, yeah, a lot of the chores we talked about today, they're common chores that the sailors had to do. Um, there were a lot of chores that sailors did that are very unique to a ship. Um, they might have to pick rope apart. They might have to repair knots on the rigging and the netting of the ship. And certainly polishing brass, I think, is, is pretty unique to a ship. All right, so Abdon, show us what that is. So Emily, uh, here, Abdon, I'm back. As you can see, this is one of the pieces of brass that we have to polish either daily or weekly. And this is a uh, powder passing scuttle. We'll be allowed sailors uh, in lower levels to pass gunpowder bags and rounds and other uh, necessary um, equipment for our guns to operate. And well, right now, this is mainly ornamentation, but back in 1812, we'll be just a simple hole. Okay. Well, it looked very shiny. I could see your reflection in it. So. Yes, I can see myself here, just like a mirror. Nice. 
Good, good. Um, good that someone to get free. Good job. Awesome. All right. So, um, Abdon, stand by for a second there while we finish up. Um, so I have a question for all you guys. Um, we've gone through three chores today that sailors would have had to do every day on the ship. They would have had to stow their hammock. They would have had to wholly stone the decks and they would have had to clean the head. And so out of all those chores, I wanna ask you, what chore would you have liked to do the least? And I'm gonna launch that in our poll here um, and add a question. Ooh, my poll is not working. So what chore would you have liked to do the least? Um, and we're gonna put some answers. I'm sorry, guys, my um, poll here didn't show up and scrub the deck and lastly clean the head okay so we'll save that and we will launch that question so you should see that question come up in your screen and if you could vote for us which one is not the one and let's see what we get here okay people are voting abdon what's your prediction What's going to win? <laughs> it's going to be um, either holy stoning or emptying the pot chamber. Okay. Yes, Abdon, I think you're correct. With a whopping 68%, it looks like cleaning, oh, cleaning the head is our clear winner of least desirable chore on Constitution. With scrubbing the deck coming in second and stowing the hammock, um, people don't seem to mind doing that every day. <laughs> Awesome. Um, are there any questions out there that folks have um, in the in the Q and A? Let me check that out. Um, open. Okay. What if they ran out of food? I'm not sure what that means. What if they ran out of food? Maybe you're saying if they had to stay at sea for a long period of time and they ran out of food. Abdon, I think the, the, the amount of time they stayed out at sea was, was determined by the supplies they had, right? You're, uh, you're exactly right. Um, the estimate will be according to the tour uh, that they will be out to sea, but also the captain has the authority to ration in case uh, the, the conditions at sea are too rough and they need to extend that tour. I got gotcha. you. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. And did the lieutenant sleep next to the sailors? That's true. We didn't talk about that. We didn't. So, where's so the um, okay. So the lieutenants, because of their rank and because of their position in, in the crew, they will have their own private space that we didn't get to see today. It's on the same deck that we started this tour, this uh, live session, but it will be at the end of the ship or the stern. It will be a private space for all the lieutenants and also we have other special type of officers like the surgeon and the chaplain and they will have uh, also a dining area for uh, eating and for also chatting and doing any other work that they, the crew require of them. Yeah, thank you. Okay, right. So they weren't sleeping in those really cramped conditions. Um, in next to all the other guys. Yeah, for sure. Um, someone else asked, what if, what if the hammocks got rained or snowed on? Um, I'm thinking they didn't put them outside if it rained because you did not want a wet hammock. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Especially with canvas, that material is not good when it, it gets really wet. <laughs> no. So on that day, your chore of stowing the hammock, you would have just put your hammock, rolled it up and put it on the sides of the ship in the berth area. So um, great. Yeah, so thank you for those questions there. Um, I think there's some here. Um, oh, a little bathroom question here. What did they use to wipe after going to the bathroom? I actually don't know that question um, in 1812, what they were doing. Do you have gone? <laughs> Probably well, uh, I don't have a exact answer. And also given uh, the fact that they were not given much water, I think they will just um find another mean like using their own hand or um any spur water that they can get yeah that's a yeah not that's a niche question i'm not totally sure but that's what we're going to conjecture there so that didn't get recorded in the history books necessarily 
We need more research for, for yeah. that type of question. I think so. so to end on that note with bathroom humor, um, I want to thank you all for coming to our presentation today. Once again, all the games that we played um, are available on our website, A Sailor's Life for Me at the USS Constitution Museum. So make sure you play those um, scrubbing the decks, uh, don't spill that chamber pot, and maybe that will inspire you to go home and, um, or be, we are home, to, to, you know, do your own chores and get that toilet bowl sparkling clean um, as well. So also after this program, you are all going to get directly sent a survey that we made um, and we would love it if you could respond about what you thought today. This will help us plan future ed programs um, and especially we just want to know who's watching out there. Um, that'll help us know our audience as well. So um, Abdon, can you give a, a goodbye shout out to folks? Say again, Emily? Can you give a goodbye to all the folks watching? Well, absolutely. Uh, it was a pleasure being here with you today. Hopefully, we'll meet again and we can learn more about the Constitution. There's not only the chores and the history, but there's so many things that are not only interesting, but fun about the ship. And whenever you get the chance to come to Boston in, in the near or distant future, please come visit us. You'll have one absolutely fantastic time and i hope to see you soon again yeah we really hope to see you all soon i've done so cool to work with you thank you jacqueline our bosun's colleague as well for doing that pipe call for us and the to the cameraman on constitution as well you guys yeah thanks for doing your work there and thanks all for coming we'll have another one of these next week at wednesday live at one o'clock yay mm -hmm. okay bye bye y'all <laughs> thank you so bye, much everyone, everyone. Okay, bye.